Anyway, what we're going to be working with are the, um, it, I've adapted this from some work from a, a site, www.engageny.org. Some of you may be familiar with that. Uh, New York State has done a lot of work working in collaboration with student achievement partners and some others. So the district's role in um, implementing the Common Core. One is, has to do with just the shifts. In, in Vermont, there are seven shifts, four in, am I right, four in ELA and three in math, that articulate, so what are the big changes about the Common Core? So it's things in ELA like tax complexity and the, how very different the expectations are in the Common Core about the language of that and so forth. Or in math, the, um, it includes just the idea of the, the fluencies in mathematics and the importance of deep understanding. And so I won't go through the shifts shift by shift, but if you're not familiar with those, um, let us know. We'll pull them up for you so you can be looking at them as you do this work. So the question is, if we have these shifts, what does that really mean in, in terms of the district's role or in terms of your own role as a principal or as the superintendent or a curriculum director or a teacher in aligning those with, a, with um, instruction? What are the supports that are needed? What will it take? What do you need to do in your role to assure that there are uh, opportunities for teachers to engage in job embedded professional development? And to me, that means opportunities to look at student work together, opportunities to plan together, opportunities to disaggregate and consider um, assessment data from classroom assessments as well as common assessments that are school-based or district-based. What does it mean to ask all teachers to align instruction and, and assessment? Simply to align assessments with the standards so that the feedback that students are getting is about their learning of the standards and what they're good at. Think about that. What they're, why can't we tell them like, what they're good at and what their next step is? Um, to ask all principals to focus their op observations of teachers around the shifts. And so when you're talking as superintendents or curriculum directors or principals, what does that mean for your role? How will that get created? Some of you have already mentioned work that you've started doing on that. And there are different approaches going on in different districts. So I think you'll pick up some tips from each other. And then to focus observation and feedback to the principals around the shifts. I've done work in some districts around um, putting together the language of the shifts with whatever their system is. It happens in many places that I work, they use, they've been using Danielson's work. And so we've looked at teacher evaluations, actually written teacher evaluations that principals have done and assessed them for the places where the language of the shifts could be better incorporated. They critique each other, give each other ideas, so uh, things like that. So, what are you doing and what could you be doing for each of these areas? So the first overarching role is implementing the Common Core. The second is the district's role in implementing data-driven instruction. So what's important in your role in terms of interim assessments aligned with the Common Core? Or do you already have a whole system of interim assessments that you need to get rid of because it's taking up so much time and, and none of the data are being used or none can be used anymore with students because it's not aligned with the Common Core. Or do you need to realign those interim assessments? Where are you with that? And what's your own role, if any? Or whose role is it? To ask and support all principals at the, di at the district level to foster system systems of assessment in hand analysis. That's a term that, as far as I know, comes from someone named um, Paul Bambrick Samtoyo, who wrote an excellent book called Data Driven, I think it's called Data Driven Instruction. Um, but the idea that teachers or principals and teachers together are actually looking at a student's assessment to see what did they do well? 
What did they simply not understand? What was not a good question? What does this tell us about the next needs of instruction? So test in hand kinds of conversations. And then what needs to happen in terms of work with principals to um, foster the running of effective data meetings? What support do principals or superintendents or curriculum directors, special ed directors, need for using data? creating risk-free um, environments for teacher reflection and using interim assessment data. You know, I think it's hard when you're in positions like yours to go, some, to go anywhere and say, I really don't know anything about that, when it's such a high expectation right now. And so I want you to have some opportunity to talk with each other about the ways you're doing that. What's some of the help you need? We can talk about that as well. And then the third piece, the district's role in implementing teacher and leader effectiveness. We started with that piece this morning. I think it's a very important piece of the puzzle. So how is the district pushing a focus on high quality evidence-based observation and continuous improvement? But I would say a culture in the district where it's not a process that sinks the ship and takes the focus off of whatever is important to drive this into the classroom for teachers to feel supported. Teachers need, need to feel supported in order to really make the kinds of changes that we're asking for in instruction. And yet we, we do need systems. And so what would that look like? Um, how does data get built into all that? And what are appropriate and inappropriate ways? How are you doing that now that you can share with each other? And then to ask and support all, other, all principals and other teacher supervisors to be in classrooms. You know, in some ways, this makes everything, there's so much more to do. The most important role, the research is really clear, the most important role is for principals to be in classrooms. And I believe for principals to be in classrooms more often for relatively short periods of time. To, so that every classroom, there's just, there's a connection. Focus of, so where are you, what are you doing, and what questions do you have?